Nope, this is not a clickbait. I actually bought a physical house to study for the SAT. And I can tell you, this is the one of the best decisions I have ever made. And today, I'm gonna share with you why I bought this house right here and why you should also buy your house to successfully rate your SAT score. All right, to be clear, guys, you're not going to have to buy a physical house. You're not even going to qualify for a mortgage. But instead, you're going to have to do something similar to really reach your target score. Otherwise, you're probably not going to get there. So four months ago, I bought a house that's in middle of nowhere. Not like literally middle of nowhere in the woods, but it's middle of nowhere for me because I know nobody here. I have zero relationships here. There's nothing for me to do here other than to study for the SAT. And if it's your first time here, my name's John. I've been an SAT math tutor for the past 10 years, and my specialty is taking a student who's currently in four, five, six hundred range to 700 plus by their next SAT. And my mission is to maximize every student's potential by providing them the best resources for SAT prep. So when I'm studying for the SAT, I'm essentially analyzing the exams and improving the program so that my students have the best possible resource that's available. So what exactly made me come to middle of nowhere? Well, it's really simple. It all comes down to productivity and distraction. Let me explain. The previous place I used to live was literally the best place to live and also the worst place to live at the same time. I grew up in that house from the age of 12 all the way up until graduating from college. Everyone that I've met, all my friends, everyone that I loved, and including the dog that I love, is in that area. On the surface, it seems like there's no reason for me to ever leave that place. But one day, I was reading this book and it made me think about this one topic, and that was, what is the most important thing to me right now? After a little bit of thinking, it became very clear that the most important thing to me right now was my mission to to create the best SAT preparation program. And anything and everything that does not contribute me to reaching that goal is considered technically a distraction. For me, I love spending time with the family and going out with the boys. Going to Korean barbecue and getting my mouth stuffed with some good meat Anyways, I love Korean barbecue. That's let's just leave it at that. Couple times a week, on the weekend, throughout the week, I was just having a good time and having a good work-life balance. But then I realized those activities were not essentially contributing to me reaching my goal, but at the same time, they were also detracting me away from reaching that goal. Sometimes I thought, hey, you can't always work 24-7. You have to have a break in the middle and you have to kind of reset so that you can work the next day. I agree with that idea, but it's deeper than that. Whenever I'm working on something and something hard comes up, the first thing that comes to my mind is is I, I just don't want to do this. And if somebody invites me to go on a Korean barbecue, which is on like a 10 billion on a happiness scale, I'm just going to drop this activity and just go right out. It's like when you're studying for an exam that's tomorrow or an assignment that is due tomorrow, you'd rather just sit and watch a stupid documentary on Netflix that you have zero care for. You'd rather do that than to work on these assignments because on a happiness scale, it's all relative. Work assignment is negative 10,000. Netflix documentary might have zero happiness, but compared to doing the assignment, it's 10,000 times better. So all all the fun activities that I had access to were essentially making it harder for me to do the work that I actually need to do. So staying at home, having access to all these fun things and having a work-life balance not only took a lot of time and effort away from reaching my goal, but it also made it harder for me to do the work. So just like that, I decided to leave everything and just move. It's like going on a diet. When you're on a diet and you're trying to cut out eating potato chips, it's a lot easier for you to not have potato chips at your house than to have them in your cabinets and just try to resist the urge to eat those chips. It's been about four months since I lived in this house and my life got so much easier and it's so much easier to do the work. Because there's nothing for me to do here than to just work on my business, my relative scale is starting at negative 10,000. If it's negative 10,000, that's the most fun thing for me to do. When things get hard and I just want to procrastinate, and just open up a bag of chips, turn on Netflix and be a couch potato. I don't even have a TV in this house. It's simply just not an option. And when people invite me out and I just want to go for a Korean barbecue, I can't do that. I, I'm physically not there. And some of you guys might be thinking, John, this is not sustainable. You cannot live your life for the rest of your life like this. It's just not going to work. And I 100% agree. Sometimes I want to go back home, hang out with the family, hang out with the friends, go for Korean barbecue. And every once in a while, it gets really lonely down here. But that's okay. Because this is going to be a temporary sacrifice that I have made to reach my goal. If my top priority is to make the best possible SAT program, then I'm ready to make the sacrifice and cut everything out. Not permanently, but just temporarily. So enough about me. How does this apply to you? Well, if you're trying to raise your SAT score, one thing I can certainly tell you is that SAT is just simply input and output. The more hours and more work you put in, the more improvement and the higher score you're going to get out. And right now, studying for the SAT is harder than ever because one, the exam itself is harder. But second, more importantly, there are just so many distractions out there.
And the first step you need to take comes with your phone. You see, the apps on these phones, like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, these things are specifically designed to get you hooked and get you addicted. And if studying for the SAT is at minus 10,000 on the happiness scale, this thing is on like 16 trillion. So in order for you to increase your input, you have to be less distracted. And to minimize distraction, you have to get rid of your phone. And putting your phone just kind of face down in the corner, that doesn't work because whenever you're working, you know subconsciously that your phone is right there. And when things get hard, you're your brain's just gonna automatically resort to just going for your phone and turn on Instagram and start scrolling. And next thing you know, 30 minutes, gone. So what I would recommend is put your phone somewhere you cannot easily see and access. Something I like to do is just put your phone in the kitchen or some other room that if you want to use it, you have to physically go there. So put your phone away. And the second thing you want to do is you want to plan out what you need to do for that day. So for me, I have this journal right here. This is just a simple journal that I got from Walmart. And what I do the night before I go to sleep is that I list out things that I need to get done tomorrow. So for example, you see a bunch of these things here. These are the things that I need to get done. The benefit of doing this is you know exactly what you need to do when you need to do the work. Another piece of distraction is you sit down and you know that you have to study for the SAT, but you have no idea what to do. Then you spend the next 10, 15, 20 minutes thinking about what you should do. And when things get hard, you might go for your phone. So instead, the night before, just list out exactly what you need to do so that when you wake up the next day and you're done with school and whatever you're sitting on your desk, you are ready to rock and roll. You know exactly what you need to do. It just makes it easier. And the third and the last thing is more of a mindset. And that is be ready to make the temporary sacrifice. So take a second and think about what is the most important thing to me right now. For some people, it might be raising your SAT score and going to the best possible college. And for other people, it probably isn't. And that's okay because not everyone is the same. But if your goal is to go to the best possible college and you're going to need a high SAT score, then you're going to know exactly what activities contributes towards you reaching that goal and what activities distract you away from you reaching that goal. And when it's clear, it's time for you to make some temporary sacrifices. So if you want to maximize your score, get rid of your phone, write down what you need to do the next day and make the sacrifice. Because if you don't make sacrifice for your goals, then your goals will become the ultimate sacrifice.